Hello, so today we'll read another story from Myths and Mysteries of Washington, uh, written by L.E. Braggs. And uh, all uh, profit um, from this story should go to him and his publisher or whatever, and the person who made the story. Anyway, this is uh, D.B. Cooper, Where Are You? Eight-year-old Brian Ingram was digging in the sand of uh, Tenar Bar, bar uh, along the shores of the Columbia River when he made a discovery that would uh, reactivate an investigation into a nine-year-old unsolved Northwest mystery. Ingram and his family were on a winter excursion uh, sunny and a sunny picnic uh, February 10, 1980. Um, along the sandy Columbia River Beach, just a few miles uh, downriver of Vancouver, uh, and the Interstate 5 bridge over the river. Uh, Ingram was digging a hole for a fire pit when he un uncovered a uh, soggy half uh, disintegrated pack of $20 bills, just inches below the ground. Under a shallow layer of sand, the family turned the money uh, a sum of $5,800 into the local authorities um, who contacted the Federal Bureau of Investigations. The bills were so rotten that only Andrew Jackson's image and the serial numbers were visible. A check of the serial numbers revealed that the bills were from the United States. Only uns unsolved uh, skyjacking case, young uh, Ingram was found the only uh, tangible clue in the investigation since the hijacking. Thanksgiving Eve, November 24th, uh, 1971, was a typical Northwest November day, full of wind, rain. No one noticed when uh, Dan Cooper walked up to the Northwest uh, Orient Airline uh, ticket con court counter at uh, Portland International Airport and paid cash, only one-way ticket from Portland to Seattle. Um, neither did anyone pay attention when that average looking middle aged man, uh, as he sat among the Thanksgiving travelers for uh, 50 minutes waiting for his flight, um, if the quiet man was an olive skinned, slender white male with dark hair uh, parted on the left and receding hairline. He wore a black suit with white shirt and a narrow black tie under a black uh, raincoat. His shoes were brown loafers. Later on during the flight, he sported dark wrap around sunglasses. Around 3 p.m., the Boeing flight, um, the Boeing uh, seven around 3 p.m. the Boeing 727 took off uh, for Portland bound for Seattle the um, non non-descriptive passenger sat in seat 18 seat near the back of the plane no one else sat with him in the last row of the seat in the coach uh, compartment he drank several whiskeys and chain smoked uh, cigarettes not a long after takeoff, he passed a note to the flight attendant, uh, thinking it contained some sort of um, pickup line. He, the flight attendant uh, pocketed the folded piece of paper. In response to he, her rebuff, the man in 18C advised, Miss, you better look at that note. I have a bomb. Uh, the note did not ask for her phone number as she thought it might. Rather, the message said that the man had a bomb with him. The pilot should wait uh, for further instructions and there should be no funny uh, stuff. When the flight crew learned of the matter, they radioed the ground uh, for advice uh, of, for the situation. The flight attendant was... Um, Instructed to try to determine whether the Cooper really had a bomb on board. Um, when she uh, asked him, he opened his briefcase uh, just long enough for her to see red cylinders and a tangle of wires that filled the suitcase. Cooper continued to communicate with the attendant um, 
through a series of pre-printed notes. He asked for four parachutes and $200,000 uh, in unmarked bills. He would allow the plane to land in Seattle and um, the other passengers to disembark in exchange for the money in the parachutes. Uh, the hijacker took the woman at his, um, told the woman that he would uh, be able to recognize Tacoma Air from the air, and he knew that McCord Air Force Base was 20 minutes from Seattle Tacoma International Airport. The FBI had requested that the per parachute be sent from McCord. If his demands were not uh, met, he would uh, detonate the bomb and kill everyone on board. The other passengers remained oblivious to the circumstances surrounding them. The plane circled over SeaTac for about three hours until the FBI officials radioed the crew that they had the money in the parachute at 5.45 p.m. The flight 305 landed in SeaTac, all on board ex expected uh, uh, except for the flight crew two pilots uh and flight engineer a flight attendant were allowed to uh load to allowed to leave the airplane the flight attendant uh who had initiated the communication with the skyjacker disembarked and the second steward took the seat next to him and relayed his uh, demands forward via the plane's intercom. As the jet was uh, refueled, a courier brought a ransom to the 727. Uh, Cooper received uh, $10,000 uh, unmarked $20 bills from the Northwest um, Orient Airlines as requested, but before the plane uh, landed in Seattle, the FBI agents uh, copied every bill, making the permanent records of the serial numbers. After receiving the two hundred thousand uh, dollars uh, and four parachutes, the hijacker uh, next asked to be flown to Mexico. He also demanded that the plane fly at. Uh, no, no more than uh, 200 miles an hour and at altitudes uh, 10,000 feet uh, with its landing gears down and the wings flaps uh, lowered to 15 degrees. The pilot informed Cooper that it would be necessary to refuel the 727 uh, because it could not make it to uh, Mexico flying at that low speed with the landing gear and flops down. They uh, convinced the the uh, they convinced the man that the plane would have to land in Reno, Nevada, to refuel. At 7:40 p.m., the 727 left the runway at SeaTac uh, after asking for the flight attendant uh, attendant for instructions on lowering the stairway at the back of the plane. Cooper ordered her into the cockpit where he told her to uh, stay until the plane landed before closing the first class compartment curtain. She gr uh, glanced back just long enough to see Cooper trying um, something around his waist. A uh, brinkling red light on the in instrument panel caught the pilot at atten uh, caught the pilot's attention at a little before 8 p.m. Uh, a light indicated one of the airplane's um, door was uh, ajar. The flight uh, crew guessed that Cooper had opened the passenger staircase um, in the plane tail section. About 11 minutes later, the crew felt a pressure change in the in their ears and noticed uh, uh, bumps on their. Uh, gauges as they flew over Lewis River near the town of La Center, La Center in southwest Washington. The pilot radioed the ground and reported that they thought the passenger had just left the plane. Uh, when the 727 landed in Reno, there was no signs of Cooper, and the $200,000 of two and four, uh, or two of the four parachutes. 
All that remained were two parachutes, a thin black tie, and a pearl tie pin, and a pile of cigarette butts. Cords from the one of the remaining parachutes had been removed, probably to tie the money uh, sacks around his waist. FBI agents surmised that Cooper had jumped at 8.11 p.m. Uh, when the pass pressure gauge recorded the bump over south uh, uh, or nor uh, South Clark County, Washington, they believe that the bump were caused by the skyjacker um, jumping from the jumping off the stairs of the uh, ramp, bouncing up or afterward. Two jets from McCord Air Force Base were able to follow within five miles of the passenger plane. The Air Force pilots never saw anyone jump from the 727 in the dark rain-soaked uh, skies over South um, West Washington. Um, one of the parachutes was spotted uh, that may have enabled Cooper to jump without being seen. The second was an inoperable uh, training parachute that had uh, mistakenly been included in, with the others. The story of the hijacking was soon broadcast and printed across the nation. Uh, the press learned that the FBI was interested in Portland resident um, when it was reported that Portland's man uh, with an initially uh, D.B. Cooper was a person of interest the hijacker became identified thereafter as D.B. Cooper. Even after Portland's Cooper was been uh, cleared of actual hijacking, never uh, referred to himself as anyone but Dan Cooper. FBI agents, uh, local authorities, and more than 300 uh, Fort Lewis soldiers uh, scoured the southwest corners of the state for 18 days. Well, with no success, the rugged wooden uh, terrain was examined by air, by river, and on foot. But not a trace of the mysterious Dan Cooper was to be found until Brian Ingram discovered the tattered bills nine years later since the loot was found under such a thin layer of sediment gene genealogist who studied the site concluded that it had been swept to that location by the stream within a year or two of the find after Ingram's discovery. The FBI agents found a few more dirty uh, fragments of bills and some broken uh, rubber bands. Uh, Seattle FBI agent Jack uh, Pregel said of the search, Well, work today and tomorrow and probably knock it off and bring my troops back up here um, and reassess the situation. Some of the area is inaccessible, and there's no way we can search the whole river. Uh, the hunt was called off on February 15, 1980, after fresh snow fall had covered the ground. None of the ransom money has been um, turned up. Uh, in circulation, nor has the body or even scraps of the clothing been found. Uh, the eruption of Mount St. Helens on May 18, 1980, and the ensuing uh, mud f uh, flows may have buried any existing evidence forever. Uh, who c was Dan Cooper? He was a man who uh, showed fan familiarity with Northwest and is probably spent time near Tacoma, possibly bearing during military service. He was an experienced parachute, parachutist, uh, again pointing to the likelihood of military experience under the heading, Cooper is no Robin Hood. Um, the January 1972 airline pilot Association Pilot Bulletin told its members he demonstrated more than uh, passing knowledge of air environment, especially parachuting. It is possible that D.B. Cooper path may have crossed that um, of airline personnel. Uh, the airline pilot at some time under another name, he is reported to have been have a bitter hatred against the airline um, 
airline. Uh, we're going to stop here and then I'll put up the rest of it on the next video. All right. So tune in for the next one. Bye.